Welcome to Global Village. Today we have two guests. We are very honored to have Bill Bennett from the uh, UFC, UFCW 401 and also Kern, the Executive Director of Brooks Chamber of Commerce. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Great to be here. Thank you. Uh, Bill, uh, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? A little bit about myself. There you go. Uh, my background is not in unions. I. Uh, my father was a union rep. Uh, I came to this, to this job in a very different way. I, uh, I uh, worked in construction. I worked for Parks Canada. Uh, I worked as a customs officer for a while and kind of fell into this as a, as a default. I went to work in a plant uh, that was represented by UFCW. I had my own local for a period of four or five years, which we merged with 401. Uh, I went to work as a relief rep and on the executive board for 401 for 14 years. And I've been in Brooks as a full-time uh, rep, uh, labor relations officer for UFCW for the last nine years here in Brooks. Wow. Uh, you guys are doing a great job. Welcome. Thank you very much. Karen, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself then? Well, let's see. Born and raised uh, farm environment. Um, growing up, uh, having our own small business, knowing what uh, was entailed in getting a small business. We owned and operated a local farm as well. Uh, moving to Alberta now, um, finding the value that small business plays in our society as careers, as family, as organizations, and um, took on the job as executive director here in Brooks. Um, I have some um, chamber knowledge in my past histories, working in downtown associations and with other local chambers. So um, this was a good fit for me. I see it as a challenge. I see Brooks Business need a uh, representation here in Brooks and in the province. So, no, and, uh, since you joined <coughs> as executive director, you're doing a great job, and there is improvement at the chamber. That's all I know. Well, it's good to hear, and it's because of our directors as well. There you and go. And a good and membership. There you go. You have good also a board of directors, and you the do. city is very supportive. Yes. Okay. Uh, you want to touch base a little bit about. Um, the UFCW? Uh, let's see. The UFCW is one of the, if not the largest, and I couldn't prove it, so I won't say it, largest private sector representing unions in, uh, in Alberta, in actually in North America. In Alberta, we represent at any given time, because the numbers have changed now with the economic downturn, uh, anywhere from about 25 to 30,000 members across the province, all the way from uh, Fort McMurray, Alberta, to the border. But across Canada, we represent just uh, under 300,000 and over, uh, and over 1.3 million in North America with many members in uh, the United States. Uh, we represent everything from uh, WCB, uh, short-term disability, to labor relations, as in terminations and, and, uh, and labor or workers' rights, but not only work, just workers' rights, but human rights and discrimination and all of that kind of stuff. Anything that a worker uh, could face in the workplace and outside of the work face, the workplace that uh, you know that, that we can do, we deal with. So here you represent also JBS. Here we represent JBS and in in Brooks as well, uh, the Safeway workers as well. Oh, the Safeway supermarket. Yep, yep. Okay. and Gas Bar. They're both our, they're all of our members as well. Oh, okay, mm. oh, that's uh, where's Gas Bar? Right, uh, I guess what it would be east of the uh, Safeway store itself. Oh. In the back end or this end of the parking lot, close to the Canadian Tire. Oh, okay. Not that I want to plug Canadian Tire, but... Uh, there you <laughs> go, there you go. Okay, okay. Uh, you want to touch base with uh, the Chamber of Commerce and um, the process of one wants to be a member of the Chamber of Commerce. Somebody wanting to be a member? Well, you have to um, have a business to be an actual member. Okay. <coughs> um, it's not um, Brooks-specific. Okay. We are the Brooks and District Chamber of Commerce, so we quite cover quite a large area of the County of Newlands itself. Oh, okay. um, the Chamber in Brooks is part of a large organization, the Alberta Chamber of Commerce, which is also part of the Canadian Chamber of Commerce. So in that, we want to have a voice for our community and our business community in particular, right? Um, our Brooks Chamber of Commerce is run by a board of directors, okay. so they set the policy for us. And it is staff's job and um, the director's job to follow them through and to see that Brooks business is represented in those different agencies, whether it's local, provincial, or federal. Wow. 
uh, Bill, uh, you've been in this business for a long time. You dealt with a different diverse population in terms of labor and all that. And Brooks is one of the areas you have all these nationalities all in a small town and count of New World region. What do you see as a advantage of diverse communities such as ours? What are the advantages of 21st century economic growth? Well, you know, that, that, that's a difficult one from like my aspect of things because I deal with, in circumstances, of disadvantage, really. I mean, I do. Yeah. But as, you know, I mean, for the community, the exposure uh, that it allows, uh, I'm a Southern Alberta born and raised, you know, quote unquote, closet redneck, give it whatever title you want. Uh, I've been exposed to stuff in the last nine years that I've been in Brooks that I never would have been exposed to uh, had I not had the experience of coming here. And I think that's a good thing. You know, learning about other cultures, learning about, uh, you know, uh, other countries, other uh, faiths and ethnicities and, and whatever else. I think that's a huge benefit to this community, although sometimes it might be a little difficult for them to, to see past certain issues. I think it's a fantastic opportunity to learn about other people, other cultures, and, and to embrace it. I really do. And and it's, like you say, that, that I've, I've gained that just from being here. Like you say, diverse, yeah, 171 dialects, uh, the entire continent of Africa, parts of uh, Eastern Asia, where we've got it all in uh, at JBS that we represent. So it's oh, very diverse. That's good, I think. Uh, you call redneck, uh, I call conservative. Yeah. So I would never call myself conservative, let's be very clear. <laughs> okay. As a union guy, that is a term I don't use. Uh, usually they say Alberta's a conservative uh, province uh, when they... Very. Uh, specifically, they um, until the east not so much about conservative dialogue because of the population and, and components of the demographic. Um, Alberta, they probably refer as a concept, or you can call cowboy cowgirl. It would be easier. I like the closet redneck myself because I was born and raised in southern Alberta. So. <laughs> there, there you go. Okay, uh, yeah, Karen. Business is the bone of any economic growth of any given city, uh, Brooks and Kant of New York is, uh, yeah, is. So how do you see attracting more business into the area or retaining the business that we have? Um, well, retention is always down to uh, bare bones, right? Yeah. As a business owner, you want to make sure at the end of the day, you still have quality family time. So having said that, it does boil down to dollars. Yeah. If you don't have the dollars to go home and do that and to have someone in your store mm -hmm. at any given time. So yeah. um, collaboration, okay. um, it still boils down to collaboration. It, we're collaborating with other businesses maybe to attract new business, mm -hmm. collaborating with our new EDO, yeah. um, who is fantastic in the city, have met a few times. Um, collaboration with our local governments, with City Hall, mm -hmm. whether it be Brooks, Duchess, Tilly, oh, I shouldn't say Tilly, um, the County of Newell, yeah. um, Rosemary. Collaborating with those, finding out what the need is in the community. Okay. It's Finding business is a pretty simple process um, and very involved and technical at the same time. Uh, finding a new need in your in niche. Um, you sit down and have coffee one morning and decide, gosh, we need a JBS, right? Yeah. Or sitting down for coffee one time and saying, you know, we need a dentist office. So how do we attract a dentist to here? What is their need? So <sighs> attracting business is the same process for a community as it is for a person who's thinking of getting into business. Wow. Looking for the need in the community, right? Mm -hmm and then having a niche for that need. So as a dentist coming in, we have to look on their side. What would it take to get a dentist into Brooks? We have great dentists, by the way. Yeah, yeah. But um, as a prime example, so first of all, they want a good place to live. Mm -hmm. Brooks and District is a great place to live. Duchess is a fantastic area. Rosemary, like all of our members, it's, it's just a great place to live. And it's a great community, and we have to show that, and we have to showcase it in its its light, its true light, because we don't need to put it on its best light. It's already got great potential. We need to showcase more. We need to show off more. Yeah, yeah. No, that I fully agree. Uh, Bill, uh, I know that uh, you guys uh, have a lot of engagement with the community, for example, in different ways. Uh, will you touch base with uh, few engagement that you? 
as a UFC, UFC W401 engaged. I know that uh, during the trade show, uh, you engaged through SPEC and other organizations. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird. You know, as we were talking about earlier, on that, uh, you know, the union is is as involved in the community as they can be. Yeah. Again, we have to be very careful because we are a not-for-profit organization. Yeah. The money that we generate is not ours to spend, so to speak. It yeah. must be utilized towards the membership and yeah. and representation and whatever for uh, yeah. bettering their situations. But uh, by doing, you know, like you say, getting involved in the community is is doing that. And you say one of the things we we did for quite a while was we sponsored the uh, spec association booth at the uh, at the trade show uh, we we donate regularly to the uh, we call it the heritage classic the uh, charity golf tournament here in town that the heritage puts on for uh, ashton's place mm -hmm. or for you know wherever it goes now mm -hmm. we've been involved in that for quite well as long as i've been here and one of the things that i you know we were looking and talking about this earlier one mm -hmm. of the things we started doing a couple of years ago is we sponsor and uh, have paid for uh, this magazine to be distributed to the high schools and what it is is a it's a an information magazine about drugs and the effects and the dangers and all of that wow. and addiction and then you know kind of giving the counseling call it whatever you want but giving them a heads up on what to watch out for and to be aware of and the idea of giving it and supplying it to the high school was these are these are young adults moving into society yeah. that are going to be exposed to stuff that they may never have been exposed to before or if they have been exposed to it, a way to relate and stay away from it, or you know, whatever. So we got involved in that in a couple of years ago as well. That's so a very that's, good cost. That's, so that's, that's you know, that's a couple of ways we've been involved with the food bank over the years, with donations and involvement and stuff, barbecues, you know, whatever we can. If we're approached, one of the things that I think a lot of uh, community organizations and even uh, even persons in the uh, in the community don't realize is that we do actually do that. Uh, we are limited in what we can support and what we can donate and sponsor, but we don't sponsor anything if they don't approach us. That's true. Uh, and I, I think that w it comes as a surprise to some of the local businesses and the so local organizations that have approached us that we have actually helped out. So, you know, we get, we're as involved as we can be. Okay. So is that book, for example, like that, m that magazine, is it free for everyone? Or that's, well, no, it is. That's we for actually the purchased it. It's actually purchased <laughs> and manufactured for schools. And in this case, exclusively for Brooks High, because that's who approached oh, Brooks us. Brooks High School. Yeah, that's wow. who approached us to, uh, to to alleviate the cost and to sponsor it for them. And okay, no, that's so, very good. I yeah. think, uh, yeah, especially though that men that you mentioned that uh, drug uh, prescription drug that is oh a, they uh, don't realize fentanyl. That, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think we the have the drug of choice right now, yeah, right? Yeah, we have we have a uh, uh, Corey Ranger, yep. uh, who is a RN, and I think he does. Uh, full time of that uh, prevention of that stuff it's a nasty thing it's yeah. nasty it, you, you know it used to be oxy now it's fentanyl which is the same thing but different different brand and away you go and, and we invite him on the show i think and he will be uh, next to have uh, on the show to talk about that in details about the prevention method yep. and having magazine uh, to sponsor magazine on that i think that's um, fantastic especially in the, in the group that fantastic. it was targeting when they came to us that was the that was the yes. the key to you know why we got involved is get them young so they before they get in trouble and they get exposed to it yeah, yeah. no that so. is that's fantastic i think that's that's uh, that's a great thing great cost and, and i think uh, congratulations for doing that oh okay. yeah that's good so what is the uh, advantage of for example someone to be a member uh, what they're going to get out of being members member with the chamber for as a member of the chamber as a member of the chamber um, we're kind of Similar, I think, in some aspects that we are membership driven. Yeah. We do not derive money from any government agencies mm -hmm. other than memberships. Yeah. Um, so we are definitely a membership driven base. We yeah. do whatever our members want us to do, if you want a simple phrase. Yeah. <coughs> but number one, the chambers see our role, and or I see our role as a chamber, as advocation, without a doubt. If a business has an issue with a local local uh, government with your provincial with your federal they should be going to a chamber um, if you as a business owner um, has an issue chances are there are more businesses out there with the same issue and let's face it you always do better with a large voice yeah. than by yourself and that's what a chamber does is we team up businesses to have a voice right wow. we want a voice in our chamber wow. so without a doubt 
that to me is our number one mandate mm -hmm. and that's what I feel very passionate and strongly about. Mm -hmm. um, we need our governments to listen to us and they have been listening to us so I'm quite happy some of the relations and the bridges we've been crossing mm -hmm. at the provincial and the federal level and I'm extremely happy with our local governments here that have been talking to us and uh, collaborating on bringing new business in. So as a new business, every chamber has a different, um, has different pluses. Mm -hmm. So we have what we call um, advantages to the chamber. Yeah. So at the Alberta level, they try to get dollars. So yeah. they try to get discounts for us, for maybe gas, for maybe travel, et cetera, et cetera. And now as the, as the local chamber, yeah. um, our members have now started a member to discount or member to member discount I should say oh, wow. um, and what that is it's giving members who might be another member a discount on something that they offer a service a product um, whatever it is they want to promote at that time we have a local trucking company who's giving off another 10 percent um, to other member yes wow and then as part of that we also do um, we advocate um, we also like to educate mm -hmm. so we want our members to be educated and we're starting on some new programs okay. um, so we want uh, some new programs here within Brooks we also offer e-learning programs through the websites wow. and that's something else the members can get involved in e-learning on, on what on business on business and business issues wow. um, new business people um, are usually mom and pop oriented mm -hmm. right yeah. for the most part those are the ones that have the most issues yeah. and for them it's a huge curve right they yeah. need to understand business yeah. and some of them have a passion in their product or what their service or what they want to promote mm -hmm. but they don't know how to stay there 10 years from the 10 years down the road 20 years down the road they need they need some guidance so that they can stay in their passion and keep it alive right so and then we like to celebrate so we always have a yearly event held in the fall where we celebrate our local businesses mm -hmm. throughout the community yeah. and then we promote them. So this year we were very excited to have two of our businesses go to the Alberta Chamber Awards. Wow. They were one of the finalists out of many hundreds. Wow. So we can be pretty proud of what our Brooks businesses have done. Um, am I allowed to say names? Uh -huh. I would love to. Um, Frontier Signworks, um, Mark and his crew, and also McDonald's. Wow. We had a Tish who um, went to the awards. So wow. very proud of that fact. And surprising, we have Mark very soon to come also uh, to the show. See that? Great. Wow. Yes. Yeah, so that's if that's good. just that's just one example of our businesses in here in Brooks. That says that Brooks has some great business and alive, right? That, no, so, that's, yeah. that's a good story. That's, yeah, they're uh, great. That's, yeah, that's a great story. Fair. And uh, that's, that's good. Uh, Bill, uh, what, uh, f as, as a member of the of union, for example, do, do, you, do, do your members have a scholarship? Do you have a uh, uh, other facilitation from the UFCW? Yeah, that's funny, Joe. She's talking about... Uh, um, e-education or online uh, we have uh, we have web campuses that we provide to our membership free of charge they just uh, register uh, with anything from uh, actual computer learning like learning about the computer whether it's Windows Excel any of those kind of programs to uh, specific courses on uh, we do a lot for uh, uh, like cashiers learn they, to teach them how to read codes and uh, this type of thing and outside of the, the work you know just educational courses that they can select okay. we put on different ones every uh, every two to three months okay. uh, so they're always rotating and the selections always there and they are free of charge uh, we have yeah don't hold me to this I believe we have we just with 401 we have three uh, scholarships available to members, members, families, and when we say families, we mean, uh, I think believe we uh, we encompass aunts, uncles, and cousins uh, type of thing. So it's not just daughters and sons and wow. immediate. They do expand it as long as someone in your family is a member, okay. uh, ranging anywhere from 250 to I think 2,500 dollars. But there's also ones across Canada from uh, for from UFCW uh, Canada. There's two or three fairly 
uh, substantial ones that I believe are are uh, there's a ten thousand dollar one that is either, it's split depending on the number of applicants, either into four or to two. It could be either five twenty five hundred or five thousand dollars, and they're selected every year. Actually, we've been lucky here in Brooks. Over the last, I want to say the last uh, four years, we've had, uh, I think we've had four of uh, or my members or our members from JBS selected for those scholarships that submitted their, uh, you know, the, there's a criteria, there's an essay and whatever that submitted and won. So, wow. which is kind of nice that uh, that's a fairly substantial number considering that, you know, we represent, like you say, anywhere from 25,000 to 30,000 members across the province to have that many of ours from one location win is pretty good. Wow, that's 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 uh, good. Uh, briefly, for example, uh, a lot of newcomers, for example, coming from overseas have a little difficult understanding of the process of, of the EFCW, uh, the uh, JBS, uh, other businesses. For example, when a, an employee or, or work at an issue, do they go to shops to work? Do they get involved with you? Yeah. Uh, briefly, if you can. Yeah, please. so the, the process out of at JBS, we'll, go, we'll use JBS because that's our, our largest single yeah. membership representation here in Brooks. Yeah, there's, we, we represent roughly 2,300. It's up, down, but let's say 2,300. Uh, we have, right now, we have 75 active shop stewards. Uh, two years ago, we negotiated uh, uh, something with an end of the collective agreement uh, called walking stewards. So we have two full-time stewards that are there, one uh, A shift, one on B shift, so day shift and afternoon shift. And they have full access all day to the membership. And the membership has full access to them. So what typically happens, uh, the, the person's hired, the worker's hired, the member's hired, and they do a two-day uh, orientation at the plant. So the, they do safety training, job training, all this type of stuff. And in that, during that orientation process, uh, either myself, a walking steward, or someone from the union will go in and make a presentation during their orientation, explaining their rights and what the union is there for and why we're here and what we can do for them. And that's you know how to access us and explain as everything out at JBS is designated by hats, yeah. what our hat color is and who they are and whatnot. So, I mean, it's only brief. We, we take about a half hour to give them that, but we, we let them know who we are and we, we introduce ourselves to them so that they know that we exist. And then, like I say, we have stewards on the floor that have that you know are there to shake their hands, let them welcome them, let them know who they are, and let them know that they're the go-to person, front line, okay. and where our office is as well. So that's the the short version Very of how it happens, right? But they 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 get access to us, or uh, or they know who we are right away. The bottom line is collective vision for the company and the union for yep. the more productivity. Yep, you bet. Okay. Uh, Ken, how do you think uh, we should be able to attract more visitors? Because coming to the area, uh, Count of Newell has a lake, lake Newell, which is a mm -hmm. very beautiful lake. Uh, we have other places that people can go and visit. Uh, what do you think, in your own opinion, for example, to have more visitors, for example, uh, coming to the region? Well, um, I come from a marketing background, so to speak. So for me, <coughs> it's all about marketing, getting the word out. Um, we're quite fortunate as part of the chamber. We've taken over um, an Opportunity Newell website. Yeah. Um, and if you don't know what an Opportunity Newell website is, it's part of the Newell network. So what it is, it's three websites that are all integrated. Mm -hmm. So you look at it as this great big house yeah. that has three different rooms, yeah. except the funny thing is you don't know you're traveling from one room to another when you go through websites. So mm -hmm. from my business perspective, yeah. I see as um, someone going on to Google, we're quite proud of the Google hits it's been getting and it's getting better by the hour. And the more that we do and the other agencies do, we've collaborated with uh, two other agencies and the county to put this website together yeah. and make it happen. And i um, quite proud of the founders of this and they're doing a great job with that too. But what <laughs> the basics of it is, is so now you want to go to the lake, water, yeah. right? What do you yeah. type in as a Google search? And it, and it gets you to the right engines, shows you what Brooks has to offer. Wow. Done very, very well. And the greatest thing about a chamber, because we're always about business, yeah. right? Yeah. And bringing and attracting business. Yeah. So now you go into this great lake and it could also link you to businesses and things to do in Brooks. So wow. now you're going to a great restaurant, you're eating out, right? And yeah. now you're buying into a business possibly 
because of what you've seen or talked to. So there's a lot going on at the chamber office as far wow. as that. As far as tourism, um, I'd like to promote um, our NRTA local organization yep. as well. Yep. Um, they're doing a great job as far as hopefully getting 52 weeks, and I hope I'm not saying this yeah. uh, before it's happening, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, 52 weeks, 52 yeah. things to do. There you go. I think it's coming. So yeah, um, Brooks businesses are getting together and promoting the area. There you go. There Already you go. there. There you go. No, I think that's, that's great, and it's a very great to it is. area Brooks. to. Uh, that's where East meets with the West. That's where the East from... Uh, mm -hmm. Eastern people from Africa, Asia, and all those coming here to meet with the uh, real rednecks, uh, like Bill yeah. mentioned. <laughs> the cowboys. I didn't realize that closet <laughs> closet. The, cow the cowboys. <laughs> there you go, cowboys. Yeah. No, I think it's it's good, and I think thank you very much for both of you. I think uh, you, you both of you are doing a fantastic job for both the uh, members. Uh, mm -hmm. You you operate with members. She operates with members, mm -hmm. and I think uh, we hope to see more often. We always keep our um, top questions for next visit. Uh, but knowing Bill, I think we could also give you top questions, and I know you will answer. So, But thank you very much. We are very honored to have both of you. And I will see you very soon in the next uh, time. Mm -hmm. Thank then. you for thank having you. us. Thanks thank for the opportunity, Ahmed. It's always a pleasure. Much, Bill, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ahmed. Yeah. And, Jared, and a pleasure yeah. to meet you as well. You there too. you go. We'll and talk. I talk. There we'll talk there you go. And I think I would say again that uh, magazine that you guys sponsor is a fantastic, especially for the youth. Uh, that's the generation coming. So we need to support that's the youth future. everywhere. That's what we need to keep in mind. Yeah. That's right. So that's what we're working on. There you go. And I think uh, knowing Ken, and again, you're doing a great, fantastic job, especially directions from the board of uh, uh, directors from the chamber. Mm -hmm. And we hope to see more engagement from the chamber to the business uh, in the in the in the area yes and i look forward to that as well it's gonna be great thank you very much this is amit kasim your host of the uh, program this is where the east meets the west and please again come to brooks count of newell and you will find all these beautiful uh, groups and culture and music and everything you don't have to travel just come and visit here until then we thank brooks uh, Medicine at College for giving us the opportunity today to air from Brooks College, Medicine at College in Brooks. Until then, life is too short. Be happy. God bless you all.